What's up YouTube, it's Nick from Things Money again. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a subject, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, it's SBA loans. Why this topic is near and dear to me is that I have been on both sides of the SBA loans, both as a borrower and as a lender. Over the last seven years and in finance, uh, I've done multiple loans with the SBA. Again, as a side note, I have my own SBA loan that I did three years ago with my brother. Uh, it was a 7A loan. We bought our first semi-truck, we got working capital, and so far that's worked out very well for us. But today's video, I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons of the SBA programs. Um, things to look out for and uh, benefits on both sides, both as a borrower and as a lender. And the reason why banks are willing to do these loans. Uh, typically, people hear SBA and they, they think, oh, uh, it's going to take forever, it's going to be expensive, there's lots of fees, uh, government intervention, all those things. But what I want to go over in this video is uh, some, some of the benefits for both sides. The number one benefit to an SBA loan is funding for your business. We'll do startups, they will do franchises to purchase, you can buy a business. It gives you a lot more opportunities to borrow money for your business. Typically in a conventional loan, if you just went to a bank, credit union, whatever, and wanted to borrow money for your business, they're gonna want collateral, they're gonna want your cat they check your cash flow to make sure you can pay the loan back. And they're going to want to know you've been in business or uh, have an established business. Not many financial institutions will do startup loans to businesses without the SBA guarantee. When I talk to borrowers or potential borrowers, that's the selling point of the SBA is it's the it gives you the ability to borrow the money that you normally may not be able to. Again, startups are very risky. A lot of businesses fail within the first five years. Uh, and it could be due to anything. Uh, my prime example right now is imagine it opened a restaurant on March 12th of this year. Um, based on everything that's going on in the world, there's a high chance that business would fail or will fail. Um, that's why the SBA is a good option that way. Uh, number two pro, less equity injection. So by equity, I mean cash. Uh, typically, a conventional lender is going to want at least 20 to 25% down in cash to do a loan, be your equity injection. Round numbers, you're buying a $100,000 semi truck, they're going to want $20,000 down. So the loan would only be $80,000. With the SBA, their minimum requirement is 10%. Right there is $10,000 in that example extra in your pocket for working capital or do something else. Two, longer terms. Conventionally, a lender is only going to go useful life of a piece of equipment is roughly three to five years, maybe seven uh, for the, the big, you know, big semi trucks, things like that. The SBA will go up to 10 years to finance equipment. And that's nice because it lowers your payment. So obviously when you're starting out, you want the least amount of payment to help with your cash flow to get you started. So that's number two. Number three, if you're borrowing to purchase real estate, a typical conventional lender will do what you call a five year loan amortization schedule of 10, 15 years. That means your payment will be less, but in five years, you're going to have to uh, refinance that loan. Through the SBA, they will do a 25 year conventional straight amortization, which means your payment will stay the same for 25 years regardless of anything. That helps you know to plan your cash flow, plus it, it stretches it out. Now, I'm gonna switch to the pros for the bank. The pros for the bank, number one, is it's guaranteed by the federal government. If you default on that loan, the SBA will, as long as the bank has followed certain procedures, will guarantee that loan 75% over $100,000, yeah, and 85% anything under $100,000, which means that the bank is gonna recover almost all of their money back because you're theoretically not going to default within the first year or two years, so the bank is going to be getting some of that principal back, but with that guarantee, it alleviates a lot of risk for the bank. So that's pro number one for the bank. Pro number two, SBA loans typically come with a variable interest rate. 90% of the time they are variable and they are adjusted quarterly. So every quarter they're adjusted and they're based on a floating scale with uh, let's say prime interest rate. So as prime goes up or down, your interest rate goes up or down quarterly. That takes the interest rate risk away from the bank. When the bank locks in funds for a long period of time, you can watch my other video on interest. If you want to little, uh, learn a little more. Another pro for the bank is these loans can be sold on a secondary market like an investment. The bank makes the loan to you, borrower, and then says, hey investor, I have this loan that's going to pay 6% for the next five years. Uh, it's guaranteed by the government. If the borrower defaults, you are going to be made whole. You will get 100% of your investment back. Will you pay for this loan? And the investors buy it. The bank retains a servicing fee, so they will still service your loan. They will be who you contact, but an investor then pays the bank that money 
plus a fee. So that's a, a benefit to the bank also because it doesn't house that loan on their balance sheet. And the largest reason to do these SBA loans is to help small businesses. Me as a lender, I always love to do what I can to help a business grow and succeed. So it's just another tool that in my tool belt that I can use to do that. Uh, and it doesn't hurt that you get a lot of publicity to do these loans. If you look in the last few weeks with the PPP program, the EIDL loan, every bank you could imagine is posting social media how many people they helped, how many businesses they've helped, how many jobs they've saved. It's, it's great publicity for the banks who otherwise sometimes get negative publicity for all sorts of reasons that both just and unjust. Now I'm gonna go into the cons for the borrower. Cons, number one, you're typically going to have a higher rate than you would conventional. And the reason is because risk and reward. Your business is higher risk, so the bank's gonna get higher reward. Again, if you look at the interest rate video, that talks a little bit more about it too. Number two, fees. Currently, the SBA has waived all origination fees. Prior to that, a 3% fee. Uh, SBA loans are capped at five million. That's a pretty heavy fee. You're gonna pay $150,000. Another con is going to be, they are going to require on certain loans over a certain amount, all business assets, personally guarantee, and they are going to take a loan, let's say you own your house and you have any equity in your home, the SBA is going to require a second and third fourth mortgage on your on your primary residence they can't require it if you and your spouse own it jointly um, but then they could not give you the loan either that's a huge one I mean that you're basically giving up every asset you have personally and business for this loan and again that's only over a certain amount and the last con is defaulting on a federally backed loan is a nightmare I've read a lot of posts a lot of I've watched a lot of videos on defaulting on SBA loans or defaulting on any federal loan, it's a nightmare. I don't think there's any way to ever get out of it unless it's paid off. So they can garnish your taxes, they can uh, garnish your wages, they'll get paid back. So that would be the largest con, uh, would be the fact that you're defaulting on a federally backed loan. Cons for the financial institution, huge default rate. As I've said, most businesses, most startup businesses will fail within the first five years. The default rates on SBA loans statistically are higher because they are startups, less equity, things like that. They don't have enough strength in the balance sheet of the person. So that's, that's a huge con for the bank. Number two, complex process. Through the SBA, any government lending program, the paperwork is phenomenal. It's a huge stack of documents and policies and procedures that you have to follow to a T if you want the guarantee. So it is lengthy and process in the process. And the last con, not that it matters to the borrower, but it's a reporting nightmare. Having to make sure that you report every dime uh, how it was paid, what interest was paid, what principal, tracking to make sure that the borrower's collateral is in, in good standing, that they don't have any judgments or liens or child support. It's a huge tracking nightmare for the bank also. But as I've said, the pros outweigh the cons for the bank because of all the, the pros that I listed. And again, for the borrower, I think the pros outweigh the cons. Again, I have my own SBA loan and I've gone through the process on both sides of the, of the table and I have little to no bad things to say about it uh, as from the borrower standpoint. The one with the all business assets that can be kind of a pain, and I can go in more detail about that in future videos. But uh, if you got any value from this video, I would appreciate a, a like uh, and a comment below. Do you have an SBA loan? Have you ever considered it? What is your experience? If you enjoy this content, want to follow me along on more event adventures in finance, uh, click the subscribe button. Thank you and have a great day.